Good morning, Lobster Death Cult. We are here for daily prayers. Praise be to the shoe throwers on high. Forgive us our daily arguments about communism and vegans. Lead us not into temptation to do too many pingers. And forgive us our trespasses in the pursuit of getting laid. Trey man. Vertigo by missing. Ladies and gentlemen, it's four minutes past ten. It's Friday. We made it. We made it. Not only to the end of the week, but the end of the month. Pinching a per pinching a perch. Pinching a snip. Snips! What are you doing? Playing out, aren't you? You've been acting out recently. I don't know how are you going into your teenage years or something. I don't know how fast. Well, how old are you in lobster years? Anyone's guess. They're pretty much immortal, aren't they? Yeah, until you get on the wrong side of a saucepan full of boiling water. Eh, Snips? Eh? Lo- lobsters. Lobsters. Right, yeah, good. Um, Listen, guys. Hey, hi. How's it going? Welcome to the show. Welcome to Threshold.fm. Welcome to YouTube. Welcome to February, quite honestly. Pinching a snip for the first of the month. And, um, yeah. Scoffy and memes. Steady job, a couple extra lobsters. That's all I want. If you're getting on, you're pushing 30, Slubby. You know, it's time to think about getting some ambition. Oh, I always figured I'd live a little bit longer without it. Don't forget, kid, that what you're trying to do here is to be bright and chipper and entertaining and, and intelligent and sort of glitzy. And that's funny and it's, it's, it's kind of cool and it's interesting and it's edgy and all of that. It, it puts that facade of momentary charisma on you. And if you don't play that out, you actually fail. The lobster patriarchy has many of the top memes, many of the top memes, many of the top memes. The lobster patriarchy has many of the top memes. And that is so true that it's almost unbelievable. It is unbelievable, yet I continue to believe it. Could you even imagine? Hey, look, it's not actually a Joy Division top. Hail Satan. Lobster Death Cult indeed. I am going to get the Lobster Death Cult t-shirts up for sale today. And uh, we'll see how we do over the weekend so I don't end up ordering like 500 of the bastards and then having them all under my bed, uh, just getting mouldy for two years or something. I've had, that, has, that has been the case traditionally when I've uh, got T-shirts printed in bulk. Oh, they all end up in the charity shop. There's probably a load of um, poor, poor kids somewhere wearing uh, really weird, <laughs> really weird high-ranking T-shirts. There's some that said, love dance music, not EDM. Um, uh, well, anyway, uh, look, it's, it's, it's Friday, you know, the week is nearly done, 
you've you've done so well, guys. You've come a long way since Monday. I think uh, I presume. Um, you know, I've I've no evidence to the contrary. There's a lot of um, a lot of nonsense going on in the world. What we got? Italian in, Italian Ching, uh, Harry Potter beer, uh, French French people stealing stuff. Quite honestly, uh, glittery dog balls. Loads of Mia Khalifa news at the moment. Not any I'm going to cover, but it's hard. To, she's I don't know if she's giving a real sort of push on uh, on the old PR. Perhaps she's uh, got a new movie coming out. Um, beware these beauty camera apps that scam your phone and send you porn. <laughs> do I? When you say beware, I mean I would say, you know, where. A uh, Chinese app encourages citizens to report on others who are in debt. Communist detected. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, baffled fan thinks Queen was hacked after official account posts nudes. I mean, odd questions. God, that, that'd be the day, wouldn't it? Oh, that's the dream, isn't it? Nudes of the Queen. Woo-wee. Does anyone remember? Uh, everyone had a friend at school uh, who would say that if you said, kill the Queen on the phone, on the landline, that the police would come around your house. Uh, what else have we got? Woman reveals her boyfriend is a plane. Cool. My um, my brother as a kid uh, thought, or rather, no, he wanted to be a train, not to drive a train, but to, to be one. And when he grew, he grew up, he wanted to be a train. There's still time, you know. I guess he's nearly 30, but, uh, you know, it's not too late, you know. I, I I would encourage it, you know. I think it's uh, whatever makes him happy. Uh, woman reveal what you woman reveals what your name tastes like, and it's bad news for Meghan Markle. Just endless mania. Um, cockroach boy. Look, I should probably get into these ones that I've been threatening all bloody week. Uh, the Saint Paul's slapper guy, kid uh, shagging the cockroach and then eating it. How does this stuff make the news? I mean, this is a, this is has come from Nine Gag. But has made its way now into the mainstream news. Metro picked up on it. Lab Bible picked up on it. Dale Dunn picked up on it. Anyway, uh, Yuta Shinohara dated a cockroach he purchased from Africa last year. And he was so smitten, uh, he longed to have sex with her. He talks about his love for Lisa, the cockroach, uh, at around the 11, 11 mark. Oh, there's a whole, there's a 15 minute long video about him. Um, he is a chef. Uh, he creates dishes out of insects, and he also dates them, and um, he does jizzes in his pants to them. Uh, he's making a name for himself as a creator of bug cuisine. He organizes insect-eating events in Japan with dishes that include a bug cocktail, insect pastries, and ramen with crickets and mealworms. God bless him. Uh, when he's not in the kitchen, though, uh, he is happiest out in nature. And whenever he sleeps on his favorite tree... He describes it as heaven. There's a little picture of his little face there. He appears to be just having a little nap, hugging a tree, and he is just absolutely in heaven. <laughs> God bless him. His past love is Lisa, whom he purchased from Africa and dated for a year. I hope Lisa consented to that. Uh, he became so attracted to her that he started to feel as if they were communicating, uh, but it was destined for a short romance uh, due to her short lifespan. Gutting. Uh, what what sort of insect is it? She looks like a co- yeah, she's a cockroach. Okay, yeah. I mean, she's fit. I will say that as far as cockroaches go, you know, perhaps I I don't know. Maybe I have only have very specific tastes in cockroaches, but I will say that at least was fit. Uh, he did imagine having sex with her, picturing that she grew to his size. Well, that's good. Um, or <laughs> or that he would become tiny as an insect. <clears throat> Either way around. I mean, who says romance is dead? Uh, he ate her with reverence after she died. Uh, so now Lisa lives in my heart and continues living as part of my body. Um, there's also, I think, some information somewhere on how he had a few wet dreams thinking about her. Oh, that is lovely stuff, isn't it? That is just the beautiful love story of man and cockroach just getting it done, just out there slinging dick in dream world and just messing yourself, messing your, your morning pyjamas. Mom, mom. <laughs> Mom, oh, what have you done? I had a dream about Lisa. Oh, dear. Oh, young love, young puppy love. Ah, it's weird. 
It's fine though, I guess. You know, he's not hurting anyone, is he? I mean, he, he was obviously taking care of that cockroach before he ate it. He's keen on bugs. Um, do you think he needs a real girlfriend, or I think maybe that would be uh, unfair on <laughs> on a human. Right, look, there's new current value. Seems to be like it's out today. I'm not hundred. Uh, is it 100% sure it's out today? Um, yeah, I think so. It's on Invisible. Uh, it's an EP called Searcher. And uh, if there are any young children in the room, I would say that covering their ears might be a smart move at this point. Be prepared for the usual trickery and switcheroo being lulled into a full sense of security with a nice dreamy intro. Before effectively being buggered in the anus by bass. It's a real, real serious fisting there, isn't it? No lube. Not even making the hand into a sort of pointy thing. Just straight up fist. That's called DNA by Current Value off his new Searcher EP. And, uh, yeah. Feel a bit sort of um, somewhat abused by that record. But that's fine. You know, that's what we're here for. That's um, just part and parcel, really, isn't it? For um, listening to Current Value Records, just the sort of feeling of uh, wholesale sale abuse directed straight into your brain. Right, come on, look. St. Paul Slapper. Help police end the strange case of the St. Paul Slapper. Uh, watch out, St. Paul. 
A man is... Oh, he's not actually someone slapping an actual saint. It's an area called St. Paul. Watch out, St. Paul. A man is driving around and pulling over his car in order to approach random strangers and slap them. (laughs) At least five people have been victimised since December 12th, at which point the man was driving a grey Toyota Tacoma. Lately, he's been seen in a blue or light grey Subaru Outback, pictured above with stolen plates. Damn, he's a cheeky renegade slapper. Victims have been slapped in the face, hit with a wrench, oh, Jesus, and had Gatorade bottles thrown at them, according to St. Paul Police. Uh, spokesman Steve Linders. Big old Steve, big Steve, hey, big Steve, he's the kind of station prankster, he's all right, you know, he's okay, he's um, he's actually, he's been having a rough time recently, but you know, he's he's getting through it, he's getting through it. Uh, there's some, there's Steve Linders, uh, who concedes, uh, this is a new one for the cops. Uh, we've had road rage incidents from time to time, Linda says. Um, we we have fights that break out and assaults that occur, but we've never had one person driving around randomly throwing things and slapping people. <laughs> we've never encountered that in my time. No one's been seriously injured by this man, but that doesn't mean that he's not a danger and a menace to the community. <laughs> Since posting the story of the St. Paul's slapper on social media a couple of days ago, Linda's isn't aware of any solid tips which is curious as the man has a distinctive look. Blue teardrop tattoo under his left eye. He's white, in his 30s, heavy set, above 200 pounds, and wears a ski mask as if uh, as he does his crimes. He's also damaged vehicles during his rampage. Linders uh, said this is hardly the crime of the century, but this man's erratic and violent behaviour cannot be allowed to continue. Uh, you can't just drive around St. Paul's throwing things and slapping people and hitting them with wrenches, Linda said. It's a weird situation. Is this real? Uh, so clearly something's going on with this man's mentality. And Linda says St. Paul's police uh, could help both the assailant and the community by getting him off the streets. It's important that we find out what's going on, Linda says. He might need help, and that's something that we could arrange with our mental health unit, of course. We also want to hold him accountable for his actions. It's just not on, is it? To just go around just slapping people and throwing Gatorade at them. It's, um, I mean, it's sort of hilarious, but sort of not on as well, I guess. You know, if you, you, you people are just going about their lives, trying to be decent, honest, God-fearing folk, just going out and, I don't know, doing a bit of whoring, or uh, maybe they're going to um, get, some, get some plastic straws and just throw them into the sea. You know, just normal... Decent, honest, God-fearing folk business, and then someone just comes up, slaps him in the mush. It's not on. Anyone who sees the man matching the description should call 911 immediately and let the police know his whereabouts. Anyone living in or visiting St. Paul's should keep an eye out for an approaching stranger with a teardrop tattoo and wearing a ski mask. Yeah. Um, someone in the comments says, not, not weirder than the Illinois Enema Bandit, which I did Google earlier, and it's genuinely awful. So it's it's, it's not show appropriate. Uh, right, look, Italians... Italian Coke news, Italian gear news. Um, I know you're all keen to get your hit of, at least monthly hit of Italian gear news. Italian police sees the country's largest shipment of cocaine in 25 years. Uh, Stuart Perry, mm, a newcomer to the lad Bible. Reports, 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 reports. Uh, When people buy cocaine, it usually comes in tiny plastic bags with about a gram of the white stuff. You know about you know about cocaine, do you, Stuart Perry? Eh? Eh? Stuart Perry of the Lab Bible? Looking at you. Eh? Come out, come out later. It's Friday. Come on. You and me, Perry. Out out on the town. Hit hit up the slug and lettuce, you know. Terrorize the clunge. Come on. <laughs> Perry, come on. You, you know about this sort of thing. So try to imagine how much coke was found by Italian authorities when they busted open massive duffel bags inside a container headed for Barcelona. It's probably tough to tell from the photo, but it was about two and a half tons of the devil's dust. <laughs> right, call the lingo, ain't ya? Uh, two separate, uh, in two separate sting operations, making it the largest seizure of drugs in Italy in 25 years. Around 1.9 tonnes was discovered in the con- a container in Gen- uh, Genoa, uh, in the country's north, and about 644 kilos was found earlier this month in Liverono. If weight doesn't accurately capture the amount of coke, then maybe the street value will. Roughly £438 million. Pounds. Well, depends, I guess it depends how much you pay for your cocaine, really, isn't it? So, on and what we got here, two and a half tonnes. Okay, what's that in grams? It's a lot, isn't it? Uh, do, 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 um, 
Uh, so, right, okay, so that's a thousand times, that's a million, two and a half million grams, okay? So, 2.5, well, the thing is, you can, what, you can sell that for, you can sell that for 50 quid a gram each, is that, what? what what's, okay, look, 438 divided by 2.5. Hundreds of, oh, look, can someone do the maths for me? Like, I can't, it's, no, it's too early, it's only 20 past 10. Can someone do the maths on what they're deciding that is on the gram? 438 million pounds, and it was two and a half tonnes of gear. Um, what are they assuming per uh, per gram cost of that, please? I, 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 no, I don't think uh, I need to be spending any more time trying to work that out. Um Right, what have we got? According to Sky News, the duffel bags were intercepted on the way from South America and Italian authorities were helped by their Colombian counterparts in the operation. <sighs> Bunch of narcs. Uh, but instead of just seizing the drugs and calling it a day, the crafty police officers replaced the bags with salt and sent the shipment to its intended destination in Spain. The bastards! <laughs> um, from there, they nabbed the recipients and hoped to gain further insights to how traffickers get the illicit substances past their noses. Euro News reported the Golf Clan, mm, that's golf spelt with a U, it's not some sort of deranged golf <laughs> golf club uh, attendees. Uh, the Golf Clan, a Colombian drug cartel, was responsible for sending the shipment. It first went to Honduras before being transferred to two ships in Costa Rica and made its way to Europe. Uh, British police had a similar cocaine haul last year when agents from the National Crime Agency raided a vessel, the SY uh, Marcia, at Newlyn Harbour after identifying it out at sea and using border force ships to intercept it. The total of two tonnes was found. The NCA uh, regional head of investigations, Andy Quinn, released a statement and said, Jesus Christ, that's a lot of fucking gear. Damn, you could get the whole British army high as a motherfucker on that shit. Hoo-wee! We going to the fucking moon, baby boy. Bit loud. Uh, Andy Quinn continued to say it's a huge haul of Class A drugs, one of the largest seizures of Class A drugs ever in the UK, uh, with a potential street value likely to be in the hundreds of millions. Uh, while the end destination is unclear at this stage, I've no doubt that it was destined for Londoners' noses. Jesus, them Londoners, they just can't stop doing gear. They're doing so much goddamn gear that it's polluting the Thames and causing eels to bloody lose their shit. That's the last thing we need. A load of deranged, coked-up eels in the Thames, swimming back up toilet pipes, getting into toilets, and then swimming away up into Londoners' bottoms. This is, this is something that we absolutely do not need with our already underfunded, struggling police force to then have to go around Londoners' houses and pull eels out of their bum. Absolutely no need for it. So if Londoners could please get their shit together and stop doing so much gear, that would be very much appreciated. Andy Quinn there, head of the um, National Crime Agency. Uh, harsh words, but fair. Harsh, but fair. Right. Beta 2. Mission Drift. Digital bonus from Dispatch Dubplate. Shock. Someone worked out uh, how much they're selling that gear for on the gram.
coming out with it, it seeming like they're, they're assuming it costs 175 quid a gram. Nonsense. Yeah, you're right, Australian prices. Mission Drift by Peter 2. It's on Dispatch. Dispatch dub plate, that is. Ooh. Yeah, nice. Nice bit of gear. Uh, right, this promises to annoy me. Uh, <laughs> a Harry Potter-themed beer festival is coming to the USA. Oh, sweet baby Jesus. Uh, Jake Massey of The Lad Bible reports. Uh, he says, if you're old enough to drink but haven't actually grown up yet. Good one, Jake. No, I'm with you. Uh, then we have some exciting news. A Harry Potter-themed beer festival is on its way to a handful of places in the U.S. of A. Um, but what exactly does a Harry Potter beer festival entail? I'll tell you what it entails. A load of fucking... A load of really unfuckable white people all together in a, in a bloody group wearing stupid outfits, vaping incessantly, I would imagine, drinking bloody... Drinking stupid craft beers with stupid names, bloody ugh, giving each other some sort of like a, a, the Harry Potter equivalent of Freshers Flu, probably or some sort of really low key STD, spreading crabs around or something, and all saying stupid bloody quotes out of Harry Potter and then diddling each other. It's a disgrace. <laughs> it's absolutely appalling. I can't think of anywhere I would want to be less. A load of bloody 30 year old. Mid-30s twats are obsessed with Harry Potter. Drunk. All socially awkward weirdos. 
Oh, God. Well, uh, so what exactly does the Harry Potter Beer Festival entail? Well, there will, of course, be plenty of Wizards' favourite tipple butter beer knocking about. More importantly, the magical beverages will be alcoholic. God, you need to drink yourself into a blind stupor to tolerate the bunch of absolute A-grade solid gold twats that would go to this. No offence. <laughs> um, naturally, oh God, but if you aren't into beers of the buttery variety, there'll be 20 additional varieties of beer on offer, including winter, pumpkin and holiday ales. Naturally, the venues will be designed to look like iconic settings from the novels and films, such as The Leaky Cauldron, Diagon Alley, and Hogwarts Great Hall, according to Insider. Oh, fuck's sake. The series of events uh, are being put on by Rockstar Beer Festivals. And there will be live music from the Slytherin Sisters and DJ Dumbledore at the festival in Portland, Oregon. Obviously, it's in, in Portland. Oh, God. Why do I hate humans so much? Uh, the Facebook uh, page... <laughs> uh, <laughs> the Facebook page for the event reads... Join us for our Harry Potter-inspired beer festival as we transform the historic castaway in downtown Portland to the wizarding world of Harry Potter, complete with Hogwarts Great Hall, Dagon Alley, and the Leaky Cauldron, and hundreds upon hundreds of really, really unfuckable white people. Uh, the event will host a beer tasting of over 20 winter pumpkin and holiday ales, including Snape's Lair of Secret Cider Potions and Adult Butter Beer. There will be a Hagrid photo op, plenty of characters, food from Max Shack, and live music from the Slytherin Sisters and DJ Dumbledore. A total of 13 events will take place across eight locations with tickets priced at 35 bucks. Portland, Vegas, Denver, Portland, Portland, Denver, Seattle, Phoenix, Seattle, Seattle, Indianapolis, Indianapolis, Louisville. See you down the front when DJ Dumbledore hits the decks. I'll knock DJ Dumbledore out. I swear to... <laughs> what do you think he plays? Uh, witch house? <laughs> oh, I'm just... I don't know what to, I just I don't know if I can go on anymore. Snips, come on. Help me, brother. Help me, my lobster brother. We'll get through it. We'll get through it together. Alright? You and me. To the end of the earth. We'll go and burn that Harry Potter festival to the ground. Yeah? Is that what that is what you want? Oh, is it now? Are you up for some more burning? I mean uh yeah, okay. Oh, you know, you know I like you when you're in a burning mood. Anyway, right, what we got? French shopper arrested after buying PlayStation 4 for the price of fruit. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, as reported by French language news site Europe One, a 19-year-old man has been given a four-month suspended prison sentence for attempting to pick up a second <laughs> PlayStation 4 for the price of some loose fruit and veg. Uh, a friend of mine is banned from all Sainsbury's, well, all Sainsbury's in Brighton, I think, for trying to um, put a bottle of whiskey through his potatoes. Uh, yes, he had already successfully done it once, but got greedy and went back for more. Tut tut. Uh, we all know it's always best to quit while you're ahead when it comes to being shifty in the supermarket, which is not something we've done and, and can condone, of course. It's Jess Hardyman again. Like, she's an absolute disgrace. She's a menace. She's got no work ethic. She refuses to do any sort of exercise. And <laughs> she's effectively condoning supermarket theft. Hardyman, you're out of control. <laughs> oh, she's got a BA in English literature. Leave her alone. And film studies. And literature. <laughs> oh, Hardiman. We'll go out on the lash sometime. It'll be fine. Uh, in September last year, the now, uh, the now not so happy shopper, uh, named as named only as Adele. Oh, great. It was Adele. Okay, what? In between albums. And you thought you'd go on the rob. Yeah, nice one. In Europe One article, uh, which comes to us via a report from the Sixth Axis uh, took a new PS4 console uh, to the fruit and veg section of the hypermarket in um, uh, some French place, uh, a city near the Swiss border. There he put it on the scales, usually meant for bananas and tomatoes and the like, and printed out the price label, which totaled a whopping eight quid. 
and not sure what he put the PlayStation through as, spuds, satsumas, um, we may never know. It was meant to be priced 297 quid. Got it for eight quid. Smart. You know, hey, he's uh, chestnut checkers, you know, he's using his nut. Thinking himself pretty damn clever, Adele uh, then took the PS4 to the store's self-checkout area, scanned the label and paid up. And actually, believe it or not, it worked. Uh, he then left and went on to sell the PS4 to someone else for 87 quid. A nice profit uh, from the original €9 Euro outlay, albeit pretty dodgy dealings. Uh, but Adele, reportedly originally from Nice, couldn't help himself and returned to the same store to repeat the trick the very next day. Only this time, the retailer had cottoned on, and police were actually waiting to arrest him. Well, uh, when he tried to stroll out carrying a defi- and definitely wasn't a few euros worth of suspicious sweet potatoes. Last Thursday, Adele was finally given a four-month suspended sentence. Uh, for his actions, as well as five years of ineligibility, which basically has something to do with not stepping inside the store in question for quite a while. Great. Uh, Not sure why he was so keen to grab the new system, to be honest. It's not like it's been popular or anything. What does that mean? There's a link. PlayStation 4 surpasses 91 million global sales. Well, that's, yep, that's that's impressive. Right, look, come on. Uh, We should probably start thinking uh, towards shoe throw of the week, really. Uh, I think we all know what it is, uh, reasonably. Uh, so perhaps we'll play a couple of other bits first. Here, look, there's this Chrissy Chris uh, bit called Shockwaves. Nice. I really don't think any of us are under any illusions about Shoe Thrower of the Week. It's a hot bear. It's called Shockwave. It's Chrissy Chris Malux and Herb and Dub.
Chrissy Chris, Malux, Urban Dub, School Shockwave, some Bass Rush Records. I, I, you, I, on a slow week, that could have got shoe thrower of the week. I, I, I think it, you know, under under the right circumstances, if the right situations were true, that could have been shoe thrower of the week. I don't know, maybe a mid December, quiet time. You know, a little laziness on my part, finding other records. Could have, could have had a shot at the tail. Could have been a contender. Anyway, um, riots will hit the streets after Brexit and the UK will be unstable for years, the EU report warns. Rob, wah! Uh, the Metro reports. I, I don't know why I brought this up, actually. It does just seem like sort of a bit deranged. Don't get me wrong, I'm no Brexiteer, but I think it seems unlikely that... that um, there's literally going to be rioting in the streets. They said there's... Uh, yesterday, it was revealed that the civil service is looking at the possible imposition of martial law after a no-deal Brexit. <laughs> really? <laughs> yep, uh, we're going we're gonna to put an Alexa in every home and they're going to spy on you and uh, everyone will be dobbing their mates in. It'll basically be the DDR. It's pretty much, much going to be a communist apocalypse. And they'll be rioting every day in the streets and the police will be, uh, you know, touring around with machine guns on the back of vans, just shooting people. Real bullets, not even rubber bullets, just tearing people up. I mean, it's, I think t I'll give it two months until there's about 50 people left in the country. Everyone else is dead. Just piles of bodies everywhere. You know, it's, it's like 28 days later. I'll get about two weeks after a no-deal Brexit. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> Fucking hell. Anyway, back to uh, more important news. Uh, people are covering their dog's testicles in glitter for some reason. Yeah, it seems to be a thing. I've seen a few few outlets reporting on this. Um, there's not much more to it than that. I mean, I remember there was a trend uh, that was uh, perpetuated online for people effectively putting butt plugs into their cats uh, with sort of little, little glittery, sort of jewelly bits on it to apparently make your cat's anus a little more, a little less unsightly. It's pretty weird to stick stuff up a cat's bum, though, isn't it? It's not cool. It's not It's not hard. It's not clever. It's not going to get you the chicks. I mean, not everything in life is about getting the chicks. A lot of stuff is, but not everything. And I think sticking stuff into a cat's bottom is unlikely to help you with if your goal, if your main purpose, if your main life goal is, in, in, you know, the chicks and that. Um, but, yeah, anyway, people are covering their dog's balls in, in glitter. Um, just when you think the world couldn't get any worse, well, yeah, we have just read that story about the fucking Harry Potter beer festival. There's news that some dog owners are decorating their pests, pets, pests, pets testicles uh, with glitter. Uh, according to Distractify, this trend uh, whereby people uh, have to get to grips with their dog's bollocks and decorate them was first seen at the Royal Paws Pet Salon in High Point, North Carolina. A uh, little blue glitter there. It's, I guess it's some sort of poodle. It's it's sort of shaved and groomed in a sort of irritating fashion. That suggests that people are putting glitter on the genitals of other people's dogs. Is that worse or better? It really is hard to say. I'm more concerned about this than I am the no-deal Brexit. Is that weird? I don't know. Oh, God, the God. It's just loads of really close-up pictures of dog's bollocks. It's not, I'm not about that. I'm not about that dog bollock life, I'm going to be honest. Uh... Seriously, it's weird. It's weird. I don't like it. It's weird. Um, uh, is this the future that millennials want? Really? Is it? <laughs> is this the future that the liberals, the liberals want? Um, luckily, the salon that brought this disturbing and frankly deviant behaviour to the attention of the world at large has some sense and won't be offering it as a service. In a Facebook post, the salon said, I just thought I would let everyone know. The latest creative grooming te trend is glitter balls. Please know that I love doing creative, but I will not be doing this. Posting for your entertainment. All right, okay. Cock tease. This was posted on the 24th of January, along with a whole host of pictures, providing that this is actually a thing. Either that or it's a top piece of trolling. Well, I mean, I, so they're obviously not photoshopped. Someone has painted a dog's balls with glitter. I hope it's edible. I hope it's non-toxic. Poor doggos. Naturally, a lot of people have been concerned about the plastic. And for good reason too. However, we are sure that the glitter used is edible and stuck on with corn syrup. 
well, thank God. Uh, that means that at least no dogs were harmed in the making of this abomination. Oh, Tom Wood of the Lad Bible. Maybe one day we'll be lovers. Who even knows? Right, what else have we got? Beware these beauty camera apps that scam scam your phone and send you the porn. <laughs> oh, all right. Um, a series of apps that promise to give you a beauty camera uh, f- feature actually cover uh, are actually a cover for malicious software, it's been revealed. The team of security researchers at Trend Micro identified these apps on the Google Play Store. Pfft. There you go. See, that's what you get for being an Android user. Uh, and said that some of them have already been downloaded millions of times. As well as spamming your phone with adverts, these apps will also push porn onto the device. Mmm, nice. What are the names of... Um the, the app will push several full-screen ads when the user unlocks their device, including malicious ads such as for, fraudulent, contra- fraudulent content and prawn. Wow. Uh, that will pop up in the user's browser, uh, wrote the Trend Micro team on their security blog. During our analysis, we found a paid online pornography player detected as Android OS underscore porn player dot UH. RXA that was downloaded when clicking the pop-up. Pretty cool. Other apps redirect users to phishing websites to try and gain personal data like addresses, phone numbers, and nudes. Uh, These apps seemingly allow users to beautify their pictures by uploading them to the designated server, the team wrote. However, instead of getting a final result uh, with the edited photo, the user gets a picture uh, with a fake update prompt in nine languages. (laughs) Right. Uh, The authors... uh, can collect the photos uploaded in the app and possibly use them for malicious purposes, for example, as fake profile pics on social media. As ever, uh, it always pays to be extremely wary, And um, but seeing as Android users are a bit thick, um, we, we don't hold up that much hope. Wow, can't believe that. Trend Micro, wow. <laughs> really going in hard on Android users. That is rough. Um, Trend Micro so that it has passed on its findings to Google, who frankly couldn't give two couldn't give two shits about it. Right, wow, uh, they're taking down as many of the offending apps from the online stores. See if anyone's blowing up the comments about this. Don't look like it. Uh, nope, none. I mean, I could add one. Ha 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 ha. Android, etc. Okay, best. Lovely. Let's see how many likes we get on that over the coming weeks. Uh, right, look, let's do this shoe throw of the week. Come on. We're, we're, you know, I know what we're all here for. It's the culprit uh, remix of the Mephius. That's culprate. C-U-L-P-R-A-T-E. Not culprit with an I. Just putting that out there. Just putting that out there. I guess I could start spamming the um, comments of the Metro. That seems like a reasonable thing to do.
100% she thrower confirmed corporate remix of ring shifter by the Mirpis. Mm. spicy little number absolute rascal oh well, all right. What a, what a, just bloody well stop there, okay? Um, mystery, mystery over pill-shaped UFO spotted pulsing in broad daylight. Seems like pingers are evolving, lads. UFO hunters on the internet are currently poring over footage of a strange pill-like craft filmed earlier this week. Oh, shit, it's ravers from another planet, and they're here to give us some of those hardcore alien pingers. Oh, shit. It's <laughs> ah. a weird lag on that. Yeah. Uh, the unexplained object was caught on camera in broad daylight, hovering over the skies of North Carolina. Uh, the footage uh, has been uploaded to YouTube and has already drawn in 8,000 views. Wow. Um, uh, when, I got, uh, when I got inside and checked the footage, I was blown away with what I saw, wrote YouTuber Space Bert. Uh, uh, oh, Space Brett. It's just as stupid, really. Uh, in the description of the video. Oh, sorry, I didn't do the accent. How are you? When I got inside in that lake, child, look at the fucking ratchet footage in that lake. Ah, oh, we was blown away. I couldn't even believe me eyes in that lake. I thought I was tripping balls or something, but it do, do not seem like there's some fucking narky alien raver types and that. They've come over here. They're cooking, coming out of their universe and now they're coming back up, 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 away. I got some of them knocky alien pingers and that like fucking extraterrestrial dingers. I tell you, it's the last thing we fucking need now. And it's fucking post Brexit apocalypse nightmare hellscape. Actually, I tell you what, a couple of raggy alien dingers might sort us out and that like maybe that's what we need, are we? I've no idea what the object is like. It's fucking pill shaped with bullet headed ends and that like, are we? I tell you what, I'm been smoking a few today, like, but I don't think that'll have made a difference in there. Like, I think, and I'm confident I would have seen, and I got 8,000 views on the YouTube and that, mate. Oh, God. Uh, this is in rural North Carolina, just outside Greensboro. Oh, I played there. Uh, enjoy the video, and let me know if you have any ideas what the fucking object is. Definitely alien ravers in a giant space dinger. Uh, plenty of commentators have weighed in on the video, one saying that they had seen a similar object in the sky before. Uh, I live close to Greensboro. I've seen this flash at night uh, for the past year now. I've taken a few photos, but barely caught it on video once. Uh, wrote the user, Skyhound. Wow. Imagine Skyhound and Space Brett just together out on the lash. A couple of alien dingers just having a great time in Greensboro. Uh, the video was also picked up and discussed by prominent UFO sighting daily blog uh, devoted to all things extraterrestrial. Uh, when an eyewitness uses the best of the best camera lenses, uh, Lycia, uh, I sure as hell take the evidence seriously, uh, wrote UFO expert Scott C, uh, formerly of Blink-182. Oh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, Scott C. Waring on the blog, describing the craft as a 
pill-shaped object that was pulsing in the sky. UFOs often fly towards any other object uh, in the vicinity in order to scan the latest human tech. All right, is that what they do? Naughty, naughty aliens. Uh, because eight high-tech craft made by humans is one step closer um, to making what? Uh, I think that's supposed to say each. Because each high-tech craft made by humans is one step closer to making light-speed craft and flying across the universe. They don't want to miss that historic movement in human evolution. Hmm. Uh, right, so they're... <sighs> Right, okay, so let's just get this straight. He's saying, with this statement, he's sort of insinuating that the aliens have come over to check up on the human sort of spacecraft to see how much closer they are to light speed travel. Now, it does strike me as the problem with that is that if the aliens are capable of coming over here, coming over here, aren't they? They're coming over here, these aliens, and to do the investigating of our stuff. Surely their technology is more advanced than ours, so why are they visiting a less advanced civilization to check up on the technology? Don't make any sense, does it? I'm not buying it. I reckon it's space ravers with fucking alien dingers, and they're coming over here, they're coming over here, aren't they? And uh, there's, there's this no-deal Brexit can't come soon enough. Keep these alien ravers out with their bloody space gurners. Um, while, while some may be tempted to write the object off as a distant plane, Space Brat finishes the video by zooming in on, on a jetliner to show the difference. I'm not sure what the object is in this thing. We, it may be Psytrance Ravers high off their tits on some kind of space men. <laughs> Who knows? Someone posted a really weird video in the Lobster Crew group of a Psytrance Rave uh, where they're all in a circle uh, waiting for a tune to drop and then someone goes into the circle with a frying pan that they've obviously just cooked up some ketamine in and everyone's very pleased about this and uh, then the tune drops it's it's not not good music not not nice uh, it's quite bad and then they all have a uh, they all have a thoroughly good dance I mean it looks like fun but it's weird and it does appear to be that they're sort of worshiping the ketamine Hey, it's no stranger than an Abrahamic religion. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Right, look, guys, to play us out, uh, let's, uh, what else have we, what else has been good this week? Oh, hey, look, I've got a new Tobolsky. Tobolsky, your paperwork's a mess. I don't do paperwork. Don't you know you're taking me high? You're one strike away from suspension, Tobolsky. Suspend my ass to see if I give a fuck. To places I ain't ever been. I'll suspend your damn mother, boss. Without ya, oh, you know I can't survive. Oh, you're showing me an adventure. Oh, you make me feel alive. Why is everyone in the chat just talking about data plans? <laughs> Can't you go back to arguing about communism? <laughs>
I'll be honest, this isn't my favourite Topalski. Oh, I still like it. It's divided opinion in the chat. Padgage. 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 Ah, right, look, it is the end of the show. It is the end of the week. It is the end of the world as we know it. Tomorrow it will be an entirely different world, although very similar, but also entirely different. I don't know how it works. I don't know what the rules are. I don't know who's running this crazy simulation, but I'm doing my best. I'm just out here doing my best. And those helping me do my best is the VIP list. It's a group of bad motherfuckers that are supporting Threshold and Coffee and Memes on Patreon for $10 a month or more. If you want your name on this list, head on over to good old Patreon. You can go to support the station on uh, Threshold.fm or you can find the link in the YouTube video and you can join the ranks of Oliver Hooper, Nicholas Gonclaus, Tom Ryan, Reese Mosson, Squidgy Beats Parsons, Paulie Hutton, Kieran R, Michael Kaczynski, Matthew Tompkins, Dave Long, Joel Potter, Carl Murphy, Sam Howard, Tony J, Richard Patterson, Jack Murphy, Tom Cam, Stephen Harris, Matthew Bullard, Zara Pickle, Jerome Van Thunderbutt, Mike Pye, Anthony Walker, Lily Unsub, Richard Franks, Thomas Hall, Trade Rider, Andrew Hydrobeck, Jonathan Finnison, BDR Crew. Peter Blatchford, Austin Grief, Cooper, Kennedy Light, Phil Ryan, Glazer, James Parry, Dave Thompson, Hendo Bartendo, Lady Squivington, Liam the Menace Underwood, Dan fucking Morris, a guy with no STDs, Justin Mercer and Ames MC. What a fine bunch of bad motherfuckers. Me and Snips will be back on Monday. More coffee, more memes, more toot to talk, more jive to spin, more shoes to throw, uh, more... Uh, gob to job, more hand to uh, more digits to slip, uh, more more pots to slosh, um, more dicks to suck. I don't know. Look, I'm making it up as I go along. Right, I love you all. Have good weekends. Um, try and you know be as close to a decent, honest, God fearing focus as you can be. And um, yeah, have a good one. You know, stay out of trouble. Just try not to do anything illegal. I think that's a good start, isn't it? Try not to do anything too illegal. You know, just minor crimes. I don't know, stuff you can get away with. <laughs> no, no, I'm not condoning any crimes. Don't do crimes, okay? This is going to be a new thing from Coffee and Memes now. No crimes. Crimes are not cool, all right? Uh, not crimes of passion. Not crimes of... Um, not crimes, man. Not big crimes. Not, like, grand larceny. Or, um, I don't know, is that, that the biggest crime? Genocide, that's a pretty big crime. Don't do that one. No way. No war crimes. No breaking the Geneva Convention over the weekend. Okay. All right. Just no, stop it with the crimes. All right. So that's my public service announcement for the week. I love you all. And I will see you on the Monday. Goodbye. <laughs>